I'm Michael Albrandi with Phil Jones Bass, and we're here in beautiful downtown Van Nuys, California at Uncle Studios. I'm here with my boss, legend, bass extraordinaire as well, Phil Jones. Hi there. We're also here with one of our endorsing artists, Mr. Larry Kempel. Thank you. Bass playing Thank you. extraordinaire. Thank you. Today we're going to be talking about the bass cup. Where do we start? There's been a, a bunch of letters, letters, uh, emails sent to us and plenty of talk on Facebook and a, a lot of the other social networks about this little, this little guy right here. Um, let's start off real quick with a, some of the few, a few of the features yeah. okay. that we have here. I see two channels. Yeah. We have uh, a high impedance and a low impedance channel. Yeah, yeah. There's Could we talk impedance. a little bit about that? Well, yeah. I mean, you'll notice also that it's got a different um, socket here. Mm -hmm. You can actually plug a microphone in this and it makes a nice little PA system as well. You know, <laughs> and uh, uh, again, they're two identical EQs, uh, even though the impedances are different. Uh, but you can run this one with a, with a, with an active uh, bass, this one with an active or passive. So you have two instruments. You can uh, you can again set it up. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, this is a very useful little tool for like uh, when you're practicing on and or studying. Uh, like you have like a student and a teacher one on one, mm -hmm. they can go through the same amp together and, sure. and save some space. You know. Can we talk a little bit about the power section in it for a second. Yeah, yeah. This actually does have a digital. Um, power supply, but not a, not a digital amplifier. The amplifier, again, is analog. Oh. And uh, the reason was that it, it just, when, when, you, when you do things, sometimes you find that things match and some things they don't match, you know. So when we build an amp, we'll, we'll try it with, with digital uh, power stick section, analog power section, digital supply, analog power supply, until we get the balance right, mm -hmm. you know, to get the most optimum sound out of, out of the ink. The system once it's finalized. I agree. Now it looks like what we we're, it's equipped with two neodymium drivers. Uh, two neodymium, and a, and a, yeah. A vented port. It's, in the it's a vented box, and uh, the this came about with my distributor from Japan. He said, "I want something smaller than uh, uh, the briefcase." And I no. said, "Well, are you nuts?" I said, you know, <laughs> "I said, how can you make something smaller? It's like trying to get a violin to go down to you know produce the sound of mm -hmm. a, a double bass." Yeah. So I, I I thought about it and sat down. I thought, you know, this is a hell of a challenge, but I'm I'm up for it. So we uh, we went for it and we decided to build at that time the world's smallest high performance bass amplifier. Weighs about 12 pounds. You can pick it up with one finger mm -hmm. like this. You know, comes in a beautiful padded gig bag, sure. so you can take it around. We have a little kickstand little in the kick bottom. Kickstand at the bottom uh, for you know for a tilt uh, up to get the, some of the highs in your face, and it can also marry up to our powered PB300 speaker cabinet. Then you've got a pretty hefty, potent 350 watt bass rig that still is extremely light and portable. Now this little guy is the size of a shoebox, as you folks can see at home. Big shoes. How, like everyone asks, how does it handle the low V? Well, I think the best way to do that is to ask uh, our friend Larry, Larry here. to give us a little to, demonstration. Because, uh, I mean, words are one thing, but listening is something else, <laughs> you know, especially with a great bass player like Larry, you know. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. Well, here's a 130 low V <laughs> coming through this puppy here, right here on the floor here. That's the bass cub for you. Question for you, Phil, as you know, uh, as I get this question asked to me all the time, what is the application behind something like this, a uh, combo this size, other than just practicing? I mean, g people can do gigs with this? Is it uh, studio performance? We've, we've got customers who do one? gigs with this, and they actually go out and play small clubs. You know, the other thing is uh, when you, when you um, 
an amp like this is very dependent on positioning in a room. So it's always best to keep it on the floor. So we've got this one on the floor because mm -hmm. it couples better with the low, the low bass. Sure. And even better still, if you have it against a wall or better still in a corner, it'll focus all that sound you know, going forward. Mm -hmm. And it will appear that it's actually a much larger system. Mm -hmm. But you know, saying that, it, it's, it's really designed to be uh, uh, more of a kind of a, uh, an acoustic type of band will be playing this. You know, you're not going to have a, a, a guitar player with a 4x12 mm -hmm. cab and a 100 watt mm -hmm. amp, you know, keep up with him and a loud sure. drummer. It's not that kind of amp. It's, it's designed to be extremely portable, but at the same time, very high fidelity. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to ask about that. I noticed that the control settings were all semi-parametric. No, no, it, it, it's, it's got a uh, shelving low and a high frequency, and then a peaking oh, okay. uh, mid-range, which is set about Ooh, 650 okay. hertz. And, and once again, how is that, that natural organic tone obtained in something like this? I, again, it's like when, you know, when you're designing audio equipment, it's a bit like cooking. You know, you've got to have uh, good ingredients to start. You sure, know, if you don't right. use good ingredients, you can't cook a good good meal and uh, you know by having really good quality uh, components and materials mm -hmm. using the best components to make the drivers with uh, the, the cones uh, are our own design by the way everything on that driver is our own uh, driver mm -hmm. from the get-go it was designed as a bass speaker even mm -hmm. though it's small it doesn't mean to say it's, it's not it's not your clock radio speaker in there no, no. it's a real Absolutely. genuine uh, small high performance uh, uh, driver and again, uh, you know, by using very high quality materials, using Baltic birch plywood construction with, with, with heavily braced cabinet, you know, we use a computer optimized uh, loading on the drivers. We design the driver and the box as one. You know, we don't we say, oh, we'll buy this and we'll buy that, we'll just stick it in a box. It doesn't work that way. You know, <laughs> everything is, is designed to be as optimally high performance as possible. Now, I see that there's a headphone jack here. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, since we're on the topic of headphones, yeah. I see that we, uh, we have a, a new line of product, which is uh, new for us, is headphones, the new H850s. Could you maybe elaborate with that a little bit well, for us? Well, it, it came about that um, I'm, I'm also a design for my partner's company, which is a, a very large corporation called Edifier. And uh, they asked me to get involved in headphone design. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, I, I, while I'm doing that, I might as well learn about if I could do some really good headphones for bass. So, you know, based on, on their platform of the tool, we, we developed a, a very special transducer. And these are designed that they, they, they'll reproduce the natural tone of the bass. So a lot of the time, you can put a stereo pair of headphones on and they play nice, you know, with music. And then you try a solo bass guitar through and they're like clapping out on you. They just can't handle the, the, the low frequency. Mm -hmm. These will handle a, a low B. You know, and uh, the other great thing about them is they're very, very light. Uh, what's important with a headphone is, apart from you know, I think some people might think they've just got to look good, but it's the function of that they've got to be comfortable. You know, if you're wearing these in a studio for a long time or you're rehearsing, if they're not comfortable, you know, after you know, uh, uh, you know, half an hour, it feels like it's a C clamp on your head. You know, you, you, <laughs> you know, so so comfort was 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 extremely important to me as well as the performance. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what I've been told is that there isn't anything on the market under $300 that can equal these. And these are only like $100. Mm -hmm. okay. Very, very cool. They have neodymium magnet, by the way, as well, and 40 millimeter voice cord, which is quite a big, big diameter voice cord. Wow. Unreal. Well, I think that's all the time we have right now. Once again, uh, we have the base cub and we have the new H850 headphones, uh, available from your local Phil Jones dealer. Also, you could check us out on the web mm -hmm. at um, www.philjonespuresound.com. Larry, if you could play us out. Sure. Thanks again.
little right. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>